It began without warning. No press leaks, no international previews, not even a rumor. Just a sudden broadcast from Ouagadougou, where Captain Ibrahim, Traoré, Africa's youngest president, appeared in full military attire. There were no diplomats present, no Western flags behind him, only a single banner that read, Made in Burkina Faso. Within seconds it became clear. This was not another political speech. It was a declaration of technological independence. But before we reveal what he unveiled, and why global leaders reportedly went into emergency consultations within hours, stay with us to find out what happened exactly. Because this was not a symbolic gesture. This was a strategic strike against the very narrative that Africa is forever destined to consume, never create. The first shock, an engine built without Western parts. The first device Traoré revealed stood silently beneath a black cloth. Then, slowly, he removed the cover. What emerged was a full-scale combustion engine, not imported from France, not licensed from Japan, not assembled from Chinese parts, but built entirely inside Burkina Faso, using locally sourced metals and components. This wasn't a prototype. It wasn't a PowerPoint slide. Traoré placed his hand on the metal casing and stated calmly, for decades, they sold us their engines while telling us we could never build our own. Today, that era is over. The room went silent, not out of disbelief, but realization. Because if Burkina Faso, they, a landlocked nation ranked among the world's poorest, could build this, what excuse would the rest of Africa have now? The second reveal, a drone built for war and farming. Next, Traoré lifted a second cover to expose a Burkina Bay manufactured military drone. But this was not just a combat drone. With modular attachments, Traoré explained, it could deliver precision strikes against insurgent targets, survey gold mines and track illegal smuggling routes, spray fertilizer and protect farmlands from locust invasions, a weapon and a tool combined, designed not for conquest, but protection. The Western military complex had long assumed drones were a monopoly of global powers. Burkina Faso had just shattered that monopoly. The third strike, a solution to Africa's biggest weapon of control. But it was the final invention that sent shockwaves through international chambers. Traoré unveiled a compact energy module, capable, he claimed, of powering remote villages without needing European grid access or IMF-backed infrastructure loans. No dependency, no imported fuel, no colonial meter fees. He didn't call it renewable technology. He called it freedom infrastructure. And that's when global leaders reportedly realized this was not a press conference. It was a direct threat to the economic model that kept Africa dependent. Within two hours of Traoré's broadcast, footage had already crossed borders, bypassing traditional media through telegram channels, WhatsApp groups, and TikTok edits. While many Western outlets ignored or downplayed the announcement, the intelligence community did not. According to sources in Brussels and Paris, emergency calls began circulating across NATO-aligned governments, with one internal memo allegedly stating, if confirmed authentic, Burkina Faso's breakthrough poses a strategic disruption to long-term economic leverage across the Sahel region. In diplomatic language, that meant if Africa can build its own machines, it will no longer need ours. In Mali, soldiers reportedly watched the full broadcast inside military barracks, cheering each reveal as if they were victories on a battlefield. In Chad and Niger, truck drivers played Traoré's speech from speakers mounted onto their vehicles, blasting his words across dusty highways like a liberation anthem. In Senegal, university students began sharing screenshots of the inventions, tagging it with one phrase, proof that we were never behind, only held back. For decades, Africans had been told, you lack infrastructure, you lack the skills, you need foreign companies to build for you. But in one broadcast, Traoré had destroyed that narrative without firing a bullet. But not every African leader celebrated. Some presidents remained noticeably silent. Analysts observed no immediate congratulatory statements from government still aligned with Paris, London, or Washington. Why? Because acknowledging Traoré's achievement meant acknowledging their own dependence. 
one high-ranking official from a West African coastal state reportedly muttered off-record, If my people see this, they will ask me why we still buy engines from France. That, right there, was the true danger. Traoré wasn't just inventing machines, he was breaking psychological chains. France responds, not with words, but surveillance. According to leaked chatter from military monitoring systems, French aerial reconnaissance reportedly increased around key. Burkina Bay research facilities within 24 hours of the broadcast. Commercial satellite firms noted an unusual spike in spectral data sweeps across Ouagadougou and Kudugu, meaning someone was scanning for heat signatures of factories and testing sites. France did not issue an official statement, but their intel services were already mapping every facility Traoré had showcased, which forced one chilling question inside African military circles. Would they try to sabotage it before it scaled? Traoré did not end the broadcast with technical talk. He ended with a quiet threat, delivered with the calm of a seasoned commander. These inventions were not built in one location. Destroy one, and a thousand hands will rebuild it elsewhere. This is no longer a project. It is a movement. The world now understood something critical. Burkina Faso was no longer just another African state. It had become a strategic battleground, not of territory, but of technological allegiance. Within 36 hours of Traoré's broadcast, diplomatic channels started lighting up across continents. But this time, it wasn't Burkina Faso calling others. It was others calling Burkina Faso. First contact, not from Europe, but from Asia. While France remained silent, Russia was reportedly the first to initiate direct communication following the broadcast. According to military insiders within the AES alliance, a secure call was placed from Moscow offering expanded defense cooperation, joint drone manufacturing facilities, technology exchange agreements, without ownership strings attached. But Russia was not alone. Shortly after, China allegedly sent an inquiry, not for weapons, but for civilian manufacturing potential. Can the engine be adapted for agricultural machinery and low-cost transport vehicles? This was not charity. This was strategic bidding. For the first time ever, Africa held leverage, not as an importer, but as an innovator. Publicly, Brussels and Paris avoided comment, but leaked discussions within EU defense forums reportedly compared. Traoré's broadcast to Iran's nuclear reveal moment, not because Burkina Faso had unveiled a weapon of mass destruction, but because it had unveiled something more dangerous, proof that African nations no longer needed Europe to access modern technology. One French strategist allegedly warned, if this development spreads to Mali, Niger, Chad, and beyond, we lose not just influence, but dependency itself. And dependency is the backbone of control. The question. Terrifying Western policymakers. What happens if Traoré licenses these inventions to the rest of Africa? Not for profit, but for unity? Imagine, African-built engines powering trucks across the Sahel. African drones defending African skies without NATO oversight. African energy modules ending IMF-controlled electrification projects. The economic foundation of Western involvement in Africa is simple. They build, we borrow. But if Africa builds for itself, then who holds the leverage? Traoré sensed this shift and made a strategic decision. Three days after the announcement, Traoré reportedly instructed engineers to secure replication sites across multiple regions, ensuring production could not be halted by a single strike. One of his advisors allegedly summed it up internally. The age of centralized vulnerability is over. Burkina Faso will not be sabotaged the way Sankara was. Meanwhile, France studies, but does not speak. Satellite monitoring continued. Think tanks intensified. Economic analysts ran simulations. Yet public silence remained. Why? Because to acknowledge, Traoré's inventions officially would legitimize them and embolden others to follow. So for now, France watches quietly. But quiet does not mean harmless. This is the opening act in a new kind of war. Not of guns and borders, but of innovation and independence. So now the world must choose. Will Africa be allowed to rise? 
or will the old system try one last time to silence it? Until then, Burkina Faso watches, Africa waits, and the world, for the first time, is unsure how to respond.